It's good to have you all here this morning. Let's uh, stand together. I know you just got seated, but we can stand together and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Amen. You can be seated. Well, I'm sure all of you this morning, when you sat down first thing, you looked up and saw all the announcements rolling across the screen, right? And after this is all over today, we're going to have a test on it. So uh, we'll, I'll help you all pass and then watch. But one, one uh, couple of quick ones. The Bible study, which has been on Tuesday, uh, last Tuesday it was the last Tuesday before the new year, so we're not going to have it anymore this year. And so it'll be the first Tuesday of January when we start again. Amen? And it's not too late if you want to come and, and learn a little bit about uh, the, the book of uh, John. You can come on Tuesday at uh, 10, 10 a.m. in Lucasa. 10.30. All right, 10.30. <laughs> See, I was checking you guys. And, and you passed. I need to borrow your glasses. 902. Who said that? Boy, don't say that. Um, we're going to have a candlelight service uh, on uh, Christmas Eve, and it'll be right here. We're having uh, a little get together. I think it's at five o'clock, and and eating. It won't be. Uh, it will not be Olive Garden soup. I don't guess this year, but it'll be something else. I love that Olive Garden soup. But it won't be that this year, but it'll be something else. And then at 545 or 546, we will start the candle Christmas Eve candlelight service. So please come and not only will we be lighting the, the candle, uh, we will also be uh, singing a lot of Christmas carols. So come and enjoy that time. If you would... Uh, no. Susan, Sharon and Susan, if you'll come up and light the candle this morning. For the shepherd's candle this morning, this is coming from Steve Kern. God announced the birth of his son to people that you and I wouldn't necessarily target for such an incredible message. Today we meet his target audience. Why shepherds? Although necessary to the economy, shepherds weren't affluent or influential. Sleeping with a blanket in the middle of an open field didn't do much for the hairstyle. The lack of showers, aftershave, and deodorant didn't do much for their body odor either. Outsiders, in a double sense, shepherds were probably not known for their social skills. Why would God choose to announce the birth of Christ to sheep tenders? Is there a message here for us? In fact, God seems to have shown special favor to the shepherds. Think of the Old Testament heroes. The Lord gave special responsibility to shepherds Abel, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, and David. Page through the scriptures and you find that shepherds look even better. Our Lord revealed himself as the shepherd of Psalm 23rd, who cares for his sheep. Jeremiah promises that the Lord will be our shepherd, gathering us together in safety. We will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing. Chapter 23, verse 4. And of course, we recall the good shepherd of John 10, who knows his shepherd and lays down his life for them. We need such a good shepherd because, as the prophet Isaiah described us, we are like sheep which have gone astray. Isaiah 53, 6. Thank God it is Jesus the Good Shepherd who has gone out in search for us. And the first scripture reading is Isaiah 40, 11. He tends his, shop, sheep. <laughs> he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. 
And the second reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And the second reading is verses 15 through 20. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you, ladies, for reading the scripture. I also read in, uh, in Luke, it says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen? Amen. We are so blessed today to have a group of, uh, of kiddos that are going to come, and they're so talented. And I understand that uh, a lot of times, I guess they, they didn't necessarily have a lot of the instruction. A lot of it was self-learned or self-taught. And uh, I tried to find out how long it would take to, uh, to teach me how to do the bass. And I guess it only take about a half hour, I hear. <laughs> so uh, after the service, I think I'm going to get some lessons. So let's give the, the Arizona Wildflower round of applause. and we would like y'all to sing along on these first two songs. Don't you worry. 
have just one more song, um, and we're going to sing you We Wish You Merry Christmas. <laughs> Suffering Dawn, or just LSD for short. Well, LSD knows what buttons to push, and she knows that I'm a little bit concerned about my lack of height. So just the other day, she, knowing that I'm in the drama club, she erroneously said, well, I understand the drama club's production this year will be Snow White and the Seven, and I stopped her. <laughs> I said, that is a disrespectful term, and I am not happy. And she says, well, if you're not happy, which one are you? <laughs> mean, mean. At any rate, thank you so much for coming, ladies and family. Thank you. And, and we couldn't be more pleased to, you know, ha have any of you ever tried to get wildflowers to grow on your property? <laughs> It is tough. We tilled the soil and fertilized and watered and got good seed and everything, and we didn't get anything to grow. The next year we didn't do anything, and on the outside of the area that I tilled, wildflowers were, of course, growing. <laughs> so God will decide where wildflowers go, and they're just beautiful. And I think the same can be said. God has sent these young women to us, and now we have a chance to open our hearts and our checkbooks. So if the ushers will come forward, we will, we will do our love offering. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending this family to us today. Let us think of the intended purposes for the monies that we give. We support people and we support organizations and we certainly support this family in the Christian crusade that they are doing. So let us give thanks today and in thy name I pray. Amen. Oh. 
I was wondering, as uh, Aspen's playing that fiddle, and I see her going like this, I looked at her and she was kind of looking over here, and I thought she was going to smack her in the head or something. Did you enjoy that? Let's give him another hand. Right? So the scripture we read today is on, uh, is out of Luke, and it talks about the shepherds. How many of you think that uh, December twenty fifth was actual the, the actual date that Jesus was born? A lot of controversy over that over the last few years about uh, is that the correct date? Uh, should have been a different date. Maybe it was in March, April, May, whatever. And you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? But we need to celebrate Jesus Christ being born, coming into the, coming into, uh, the world to be the ultimate sacrifice for each one of us. Amen? Amen. And the scripture said in verse 8, And the, in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And this thing here just does not want to stay. Oh, there we go. I got it. Technology. Or whatever. <laughs> so it said, and in the same region that there were shepherds out there. Why would, why would God send his only son and have a bunch of shepherds out there that are the ones that are being called by the angels to come and see this, this uh, Messiah that was being born. Why not the big kings of the world? You know, you would think if this big event that's going to happen, that all of a sudden he would announce it to the whole world. Come and see that. But you know what? Nobody would listen. They wouldn't listen. So God sent the angel to the shepherds. Now, who were the shepherds? They were lowly people. I think as uh, Sharon was reading that, these, these people were the lowest thing on earth. Now, you know that Mary and Joseph and everyone had to travel to go to the town for the census. So everybody was called except the shepherds because they didn't really count. They were low, low people. They had no education. As she read, they were probably smelly out there. And uh, if you've been around uh, the farmers or ranchers and, and the cattle and the, and the sheep and the horses and all that, you know, you start getting that smell on you. It, for farmers and ranchers, I guess that's a good smell. But for others, it may not be. But you get all that on, and nobody wanted to be around them, the shepherds. They were low life, and I and I read a uh, a quote from uh, Dwight. His name was Dwight Pentecost from the book that says the words and works of Jesus Christ, and it says these were most likely recipient of such a revelation. For shepherds were despised as a class because they were unable to observe the customary laws for purification. Isn't that a shame? You know, sometimes don't you think, why would God send his only son to the world to die on the cross and shed his blood for me? Who am I? Who am I? And that's kind of the way the, the shepherds were. But they came. But they were nobodies in that world. Sometimes don't we feel like we're really, we, we're undeserving of what God gives us. Aren't we blessed? I heard that several times. Somebody this morning even said, I'm so blessed. I said, how are you doing? I'm so blessed today. Are you blessed today? Aren't you blessed? There's a song that our trio used to sing about greatly blessed and highly favored because God came into my life and now I'm a child of the King. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ came. And then I noticed that it says the angels came and it says the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. 
What would you think you'd do, be doing if you were out there in the middle of a field and watching all the sheep and all of a sudden this, this star appears and all of a sudden from out in, the, out in the, the sky an angel appears to you and starts talking to you? I don't know about you, but I'd be a little bit of frightened. But, he, but it says, the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For, un, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Wow. Jesus Christ came to earth and God came down and announced it to these shepherds. The low life. God came to each one of us and shared Jesus Christ to each one of us. Amen. Isn't that, isn't that being blessed? Aren't you glad of that? They were not afraid. And then it says that, that the angels shouted and said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Peace, goodwill toward men. And the shepherds actually listened. How many times has God come to you and tapped on your shoulder and started to tell you something and you didn't listen. Hmm. Okay, quit meddling and go on with the sermon. <laughs> but we do sometimes, don't we? We get so busy doing so many things. This morning, this morning as we're, as we're getting all set up and getting the microphones adjusted and, and all that kind of stuff, it gets, it, it gets a little bit hectic. Is it going to work? Wanted to be perfect for everybody coming. And it didn't go perfect, did it? One of the microphones went out. But we're here because God sent us and we need to listen to what God has to say to each one of us. And it says that immediately they decided to go, uh, they decided to go off afterwards to the city of David, which was where Christ the Lord was in Bethlehem. They left. Because the Spirit of the Lord talked to them and said, Go, see this child that's being born. And these shepherds, these nobodies, these, these lower than, than normal, they're not even, they, they weren't even asked to come and do uh, part of, be part of the census. But God said, Go to Bethlehem and see this one that's being born today, Jesus Christ. And suddenly in the air it says, Glory to God. In the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Joy. There's joy in the air. Is there joy in your life today? As we celebrate Christmas, is there joy in your, in your heart today? Jesus Christ has come to me and to you to save us from the, the awful, awful world of sin. To accept Him into our life. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. The girls saying that this morning. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive His King. Are we rejoicing this morning? The shepherds did. And then I see where it said, They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there, there the baby was lying in a manger. They left everything. Now, I don't know if you know much about shepherds. I don't. I don't know that much about being on a farm. But... I know if you're out there being a shepherd, you don't just take off and leave. You don't leave your sheep out there. Because what's going to happen if maybe a, the coyotes come or whatever comes to get your sheep? But they left everything. Jesus was being born. That's an amazing thing. I'm going to leave all I am doing right now, and I'm going to go find this Christ child. I don't care about this other stuff. I'm leaving everything beside me. When Jesus comes and speaks into your heart and says, I love you, do you give up all? Do you give everything that you have in Colorado and sell out and come down to Arizona? <laughs> hmm. Do you do that? They followed what Christ had said. Nike used to have a little saying, I don't think they do anymore, and it just says, just do it. When Jesus comes and knocks on your door, listen. Listen to what he's saying. Doesn't matter how worthy we think we are, but we are worthy if Jesus comes and speaks to us. Amen? We are worthy. 
And then it said afterwards, it says, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about the Christ child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. When you become a Christian and you get your sins forgiven and all the burdens fall off and you've heard what Jesus Christ comes into your heart, do you go share it? Are you sharing this Christmas season about Jesus came to earth as a human to live and to go through all the temptation and trials that we do and he died on the cross for you and for me? Do you share that? I think all through the scriptures in different versions it says they shared the good news. That is good news. Now the last few weeks we've been advertising that Arizona wildflowers have come. And everybody heard. You know what? I think you all ought to go out there and share that Jesus Christ is coming again. Go share it. Share the good news. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The shepherds heard about Christ coming as a baby. And they followed the star, just as the angels had said, to see Jesus Christ born in a manger. They didn't even have a, a Holiday Inn or a Marriott for him to stay in. It was a manger. And the shepherds were invited. You are invited to come to Jesus Christ today and accept him into your life. And it says the shepherds then returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which was just, uh, they, they, just as they had been told. They went and praised God and glorified him. Is that why you're here this morning? As we prayed this morning before the service started, we prayed that God would be here in a mighty way and we're praising Him today. These, these young people, I don't want to say kids, do I? No, they're not kids. They're, they're little people. <laughs> Maybe not little people. I was thinking about what Steve said about uh, being, being happy and I wondered which one of those seven dwarfs I might be. <laughs> Maybe grumpy, I don't know. But, but uh, they praise the Lord. Are you praising the Lord today for what He's done in your life? Don't just, when somebody comes up to you outside or at the store, and you, how are you doing today? How are you today? I am blessed. I'm praising the Lord today. Got a smile on my face. I love the Lord. He is good to me. He's my Father, Jesus Christ is my Savior? Listen to what God says. Are you touched whenever God speaks to your heart? You feel honored that God would come in? You know, as a, as a trio traveling around there, I have to admit, there were some times we go into a church and it seems so cold. You could not feel the presence of the Lord. In a church... But then other times we'd go in and you could just, oh, you walked in the door and all of a sudden you had to take your coat off because it was so warm in there of God's presence. You could just feel it. You didn't even have, they didn't even have to start the service and you could feel God's presence. Do you feel God's presence? We should feel honored today that God comes into our midst and speaks to each one of us today. Don't feel like you're like the shepherds unworthy because we all are we're not worthy we could be called shepherds because we are unworthy but yet God has made us worthy God has made us worthy because of his son Jesus Christ coming to earth do tears of joy come to mind when you think about where I used to be and where I am now because of Jesus Christ coming into my life. Me, a sinner. The song says I'm just a sinner saved by grace. That's all we are. Amen? Amen? We're just a sinner saved by grace. There's a song also that says, do you know him today? 
Don't turn him away. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, thank you, God, for being so compassionate and loving. Lord, even though we, 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 we feel that we are so unworthy, yet you have made us worthy because you spoke to our hearts and you love us today. God, you loved us so much, you sent your only begotten son to earth to die in our stead, to be our sacrifice so that we could accept him into our lives. Thank you, God, that he was born in a manger on this 25th of December or whatever day it was, God. We know that he came to earth and we thank you, God, for doing that. Lord, I pray that you just, as you've spoke to us today, I pray that you just help us to live a glorified life, a holy life in you. May your will be done in our lives, we pray today. And may we start a revival here in Fiesta Grande RV Park. That we may share Christ. Every, everybody we talk to, we can share Christ. Because it is the good news. It is the good news. And we need to be praising you. Thank you, God, for your blessings today. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Stand with me today. <clears throat> I'd like to close by singing a song. It's very appropriate, right? To go out into all the world and preach the, the good news. And it's simply entitled, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> I guess we could do, change that to Go Tell It in the Valley, too. But, you know, the, the words wouldn't rhyme together. Okay? Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, our Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a kept wanting to say Arizona Wildcats. That's a different <laughs> group of people, isn't it? Wildflowers. Give them another hand. Would you? Thank you so much. May the God of peace and joy and love go with you today as you leave this place. And please go tell on in the valley. You're dismissed. <laughs>